Hey everybody, welcome back. Ruben with Texas All Water Fishing, and today I want to talk to you. You know, this is kind of basic, basic fishing 101. I want to talk to you about fishing with live bait. You know, recently I did a video showing you how to throw a cast net. That's a great way to save money. That's a great way to see what's what the fish are feeding for out there in the water, matching the hatch. And you know, that's a great way to fish, taking that bait and turning it into the catch of a day. It's really fun to do. Well, whether you're new to fishing, or you're kind of like me, I took a long break from my childhood into my adulthood, and I started out fishing live bait, fishing with dead bait, and I, when I came back and introduced myself to fishing, that's kind of where I picked up from. I picked up at, you know, fishing with live and dead bait, or maybe you're a freshwater angler, and you're coming over to the salty side, um, or maybe you're an angler fisherman and you're like listen i never really missed what live bait i don't know what to do i don't know what baits they are i don't know how to hook the bait um i'm at a loss well that's what i'm going to talk to you about today in this texas all water fishing is we're going to talk about what uh simple we're not gonna go too much detail but we're going to talk about some simple corks to use when you're fishing and what fish are you targeting that's always important to know how to hook the fish so you are the bait that way you that whatever fish you're targeting there's a certain way you want to fish your live bait and there's a certain way you want to hook your live bait in case you don't know there's a lot of simple mistakes that people make out there and i've been guilty of the same i've made some of these same mistakes thinking that i was doing the good thing or the right thing and why can't i get a bite and wondering you know i got live bait it should be automatic. I chunk it out there. I put it in the water, and then all the predator fish should just pounce and, and attack it. Well, if you're used to fishing with lures, and you know a lot of it, a lot of the hookup is based on presentation of your lure, well, the same thing could go for your bait. So we're going to discuss that in this Texas All Water Fishing. Thanks for coming back. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like the chan channel. It also helps to share, bell notification, all of that. Help us out. Click on all those buttons. Typically, I like to wait for everybody to do that, but I'm not going to do that today. I have faith in you guys. You, you're a special group today. I know you're going to mash on all that stuff and, and help me out, help the channel out. We also have a Patreon page, and I know I say in all my latest videos, but we do have a Patreon page. So if you want to help your learning curve, you want some put-ins, you're new to fishing, you're, you, you want some behind-the-scenes footage, description section, there's a link. Become a Patreon today. Also do open invites and meetups. So if that's kind of if that's the deal that you want, you want more hands-on and more content, then click on that, and uh, that will shoot you right over to Patreon as well. All right, guys. So... First thing first, what are you targeting? You have to go to the water. Well, you don't have to go to the water. But it's good to go to the water when you're targeting a specific fish. Like, typically inshore. This is kind of what this is, inshore video. So, typically, like, inshore fish. Here in Texas, we have... Uh, we, I wish we had snook. I was going to say snook, but... Whew. Um, we have reds, red drums. We have speckled trout. And we have flounder. Those three, that Texas slam, those are the more desirable fish to catch. Those are the, typically the three fish that I'm looking for uh, most of the time I go out. Uh, there is a slight... There is a slight... Uh, what am I thinking, Chris? Slight subjection? Some slight... What do you... Uh, alternative? No. Like reds, trout, flounder... And there's a slight alternative fish. What? There's another fish out there I like to catch, but I'm thinking about a word. What word am I thinking? I'm at a loss. I'm drew a blank. No, not a monster fish. The word I'm thinking, not the fish I'm thinking. No, the word. I'm looking for a word. Like I like I don't want to say alternative. There's not an alternative fish to the. There's there's a. Oh my gosh, I'm drawing a blank. All right, so Christopher was no help to me at all. Thank you very much, STEM program. You failed. All right, so there is another fish that I do like between the, between, beside the three top guys. I also like sheephead. Sheephead's fun to catch, right? Yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, I don't know why I even care to tell you that. That's kind of way off the point. But okay, so... It's very important to know the fish that you are targeting because 
that means what rig you're going to use and how you're going to where you're going to place the hook at in the bait fish or shrimp's mouth or body or wherever basic setups you have popping cork you also have an egg sinker you know what let me just let me let me stop right here there is Carolina rigs, tandem rigs. There's these setups that they are pre-made and store-bought. Even the dreadful and painful to see wired Carolina rig. Oh! Now, some people will be like, well, I caught my best red ever. I caught my biggest trout ever. I caught my largest gap top ever on a wire leader. Hats up to you. Congratulations. I'm not saying you can't catch anything on a wire leader. The odds are not in your favor. It stands out. It's loud. It's not natural. When you're using live bait, when you're using even lures, you want to give the most natural presentation possible to the fish to bite. There's, If you don't believe me, look it up. There's books. There's websites, there's magazine articles. If you want to get in detail and really in detail about any of the topics I'm discussing today, then spend a little time, do a little research, look it up. You're going to find that I'm not full of baloney. It's, it's true. So, wire leaders, stay away from them. Store-bought leaders, do your best to stay away from them. Buy yourself some 30-pound fluorocarbon leader. Buy yourself a couple hooks. Buy yourself some split shots. Buy yourself a, flu a few sinkers even maybe even swivels learn to tie your own leaders learn to tie your own rig setups it's gonna it's gonna one it's gonna save you money two it's gonna really maximize your time out there and and really set you up to be productive and really set you up to hook up there's a ton of videos out there to show you how to do some setups so spend a little time figure out some setups when you're looking for trout reds and flounder all right so Setups, basic setups we're going to talk about. Cork, right? Fishing on top water, fishing the cork. Two is on the bottom. What setups are you using on the bottom? Where you're using, where you're making your own rig with a with a uh, egg sinker, or you're using pinch weight, which I love using pinch weights, or you are going to free line your sh your, uh, your shrimp. I always say free line shrimp because I'm always thinking shrimp. You know, whether you're going to free line your bait, your 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 bait fish, your shrimp, what have you. So three basic setups. Each setup is designed to trigger and catch a different fish. So your cork, you're going to be looking for primarily look speckled trout. You're also going to be finding some reds, but you're not going to find majority of your flounder are not going to be swimming on top. So cork, speckled trout, and reds. Bottom, reds and flounder. Doesn't mean you can't catch speck down there. Ah, don't do it. People love to correct me. Just try to make a point. Bottom is reds and flounder and when you're free lining the shrimp shrimp are your bait fish a lot of times they're on their their top or middle column so you're not the flounder aren't missing with that so when you're free lining you're looking for reds and trout all right so we got it those are your setups so if you are going to go out and you're going to target trout then you're going to be taking your court and free lining if you are going to go out and you're targeting redfish then you you can do all three of them if you're just going to be targeting flounder only, well, then you want to be on bottom as much as possible because that's what they are. They're bottom fish. They're flat. They're they're down there. Using a cast net, you can catch all kind of bait fish. I, I've made a video on it. It is an awesome video. Captain Cody took his time out. Thank you, Captain Cody, for helping me out with that video. But throwing your cast net, you can catch all kind of stuff in there. Typically, you're gonna we're going to find mullet. We're going to find that that are that we can use live. We're going to find mullet. We're going to use. We're going to find pinfish. We're going to find um, <laughs> we're going to find a uh, croaker and we're going to find a live shrimp. When you go in the bait shops, you're going to find mullet, croaker, live shrimp, even mud minnows. Those are all great baits, baits to use. Um, you're also going to find some live crab, but we're not going to be talking about that today. Just in short, basic three, three fish are targeting. So when you are looking and you're looking and you want to place your hook well what kind of hooks am i using for looking for ruben what hooks am i using what kind of hooks is the great best hook to use me i love the octopus hook. and this is going to be really based on preference a lot um circle hook is a good hook to use but typically i like to use it when i am fishing with like dead or cut bait 
Um, so some people really love circle hooks. The hook ratio, uh, hookup ratio for me for a circle hook, I'm gonna miss the miss the hook a lot, miss the hookup a lot, cause it's a little too close in for me. Um, I do like the octopus hook. That is my favorite hook. I will also use a kale hook. Sometimes a gauge on the kale hook is a little too wide, so I will miss a lot of fish on it unless I am targeting speckled trout. It's a great hook to use for speckled trout. You can also use a treble hook. The problem with treble hooks is that they will tear up the fish quite a lot. And if you are targeting, if you're going for an alternative fish, uh, then you're, and if you're targeting sheephead, treble hook is, is a lot of people like to use treble hooks for sheephead, but you are trying to get two or three trebles through that sheephead's jaw to penetrate that jaw. And a lot of times it will bash, mash down on it and, and crunch that treble hook a lot. So, uh, again, I try to stay with the octopus hook, kill hook, eh, yeah, a little bit. Treble hook isn't a bad idea. Um, you do have J hooks. J hooks are good hooks to use too, but typically, you know, you have that long, that long shaft or that, the long head or whatever you want to call it. The longer part of the hook is going to be really exposed. So that's why I prefer the octopus hook over the J hook. J hook is a great hook to use if, unless you, if you have a big bait, it's a really good uh, bait to use when you are trying to get that bait to really stick out far or the hook to really stick out far of the bait but octopus octopus hook all the way size one through size three that's really all you need for your inshore fish i try to make it as small as possible but then again it just depends on what size of bait you have if you're catching throwing your cast net or if you're gonna go to the bait shop and they only have like real big mullet then you might want to use a size two or size three but i try to keep it water down as small as possible because again we're all we're talking about that live natural presentation of the fish of the bait to the fish all right so where do you put place to hook for your bait we're going to talk about shrimp first when you are fishing with the shrimp one of the things you do not want to do is hook it through its back yeah, the the shrimp isn't going to look natural. Um, if it's any kind of current, it's going to helicopter a lot and spin a lot. Stay away from it. I'm guilty of doing it. I fished that way before as well. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't catch fish like that. I'm just saying it's not in your favor. You want to hook it around the head area. Avoid any of that darker stuff. Even maybe try and go through the horn. That's a real hard, tough spot on the shrimp to make it sure that you know it'll stay on there whenever you cast and cast uh, you know it can really benefit just depends on the size of the shrimp and also depends on your size of your hook whether you can make that happen or not you can also hook it through the tail now there's benefits to hooking it each and different every way um, and there's no right or wrong way to do this okay well there's wrong there's definitely wrong ways but there's a lot of different reasons why you would hook it if you're getting a lot of tail bites then you could switch it, your hook around and go through the tail if a lot of times it they will just leave you with the head only then that's when i'll switch it and go through the tail now if you find yourself in strong water currents then what you can simply do is pinch that tail off have your hook go through the from the bottom to the top and what that's going to do, if you have that strong water current, that's going to allow the shrimp to flatten out a lot. And again, we're looking for the most natural uh, possible way to present your, your bait. So going through the tail and letting it flatten out a little bit in that strong water current will really get you a good opportunity if there's fish in the area to getting hooked up. When it comes to bait fish, there are several ways. There are several areas that you can hook a bait fish. Um, if you are fishing with a cork, then I would hook the bait fish through the top part, through his dorsal fin. What that's going to do is make the fish try to swim away from that area, and he's going to dive down a lot. And you just want to pop that cork every once in a while to create that chatter, that chatter sound, and that little distress, that that disturbance on the water surface, which is going to draw the predator fish in. So hook it through the dorsal fin if you are fishing with a cork. You can also hook the bait fish through its mouth. You want to come with the hook underneath this chin and come out like around the nostril or through a nostril rather. That's, that's also great to use when you are free lining. If you're uh, fishing on bottom, 
that's going to create a very natural presentation to the fish. You can also hook the fish through its tail. Another great way to bait the hook the fish when you are fishing from bottom or you are free lining. The area between its anus and tail fin, you can hook it there as well. That is a great place to when you want to, when you are fishing on bottom, if you're fishing with an egg sinker or you're fishing with a pinch weight, it's gonna make the fish or the, the bait fish swim up a little bit and try to get away from that that hook because he doesn't know what, what the heck is going on there. It's really gonna cause him to swim up a lot. The one thing that I will recommend is that when you are fishing on bottom, every once in a while, give that fish a little pop, wake them up, make them start moving. Whether you're using a croaker or mullet or mud minnow or even a pinfish, you want to do give them that that little that little shake and wake them up a little. One of the misconceptions that people have a lot when you are fishing with pinfish is that you have to cut the dorsal fin. So you don't have to do that. That's really an extra step. That's really not necessary because pinfish getting eaten every day by a lot of the predator fish with a dorsal fin on. They don't wait to find the fin, the, the pinfish without the dorsal fin to eat them. Um, that's a misconception, misconception. I know a lot of people will do that and take the extra step, but it's really not necessary. Well, I hope this information helps you if you are new to fishing, like I said, or maybe you just want to get want to get and try out some new uh, new techniques fishing with live bait. Um, if you have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comment section. Um, there is, like I said before, there is ton and ton and tons of information out there for you guys. If you are trying to target specific kind of fish, if you want to learn how to use specific kind of bait, or possibly even try different rigs. So feel free to search the internet and find out some of that stuff because, you know, knowledge is key. And, you know, the, the best way to become a better angler, a better fisherman is by time on the water. So get out there, try some of these tips and techniques that I talked to you about today and talked to you about in the past. And, you know, just get some time on the water. A lot of this, a lot of stuff is really based, especially when it comes to hook size and hooks It's and and. Uh, areas where you want to fish for the fish a lot of that is really based on personal preference now i'm no expert by any means i can just share with you through my experience and my time on the water to help your learning curve just a little bit we do have a patreon page so if you want to help your learning curve even a little more and further support the channel then click on the patreon link that is in the description section i'll also leave some mute and some other links where some videos suggested videos like the cast net video that i did with captain cody that's going to be down there and also if you're wondering okay what kind of fluorocarbon leader line do you use what what kind of hooks do you use i'll leave some of that stuff in the links in the description section as well so you can just click on on that and you can see and and go to amazon and pick some of that stuff up today our academy or or wherever links i i leave down there so but thanks guys i really appreciate each and every one of you uh thanks and thank you very much for supporting the channel and helping me continue to grow you know subscribe like comment share that helps out a ton i can't stress that enough but hopefully next time you catch me hooking up thanks <laughs>